Mansi. Hello and welcome to African Farming. I took the N14 and left the Joburg skyline behind me. I'm now on Oneo Farms to meet with Eric Mawane, who grows peppers to sweeten the pot and chilies to spice up his life. Let's go meet him. Mawane is a first-generation farmer here on Oneo Farms. In 2012, the then-engineer and market research fundi traded his suit and his corporate desk job for farm life, where the perks of being your own boss come with a lot of risk, uncertainty and hard work. His journey has been full of thorns as he describes it, having to contend with tornadoes, floods and hail. But thanks to the love, support and guidance of his late father, he has persevered and secured the next generation of farmers to work this land. Eric, we know that farms don't usually look good in winter, but this year is much worse. I mean, why is that and what happened? Look, uh, Lindy, climate change has had a negative impact on the production on the farm. Uh, we had extremely low temperatures this year, about minus 80 degrees. And then that had impact on my production on the farm. Uh, we had uh, our greenhouses full of uh, peppers and um, they all died. And that in turn, we've had huge orders. We've lost all, all this. That is terrible. So now what is the plan going forward? Look, um, we farmers, the next step we need to do is start again. Uh, take out everything uh, out of the fields, prepare the soil again and start planting again. And that's the thing about being a farmer. You need to be resilient. You need to keep exactly. pushing through the pain. Yes. But you didn't start off as a farmer. You studied engineering. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Where numbers and statistics yes. and market yeah. research was all part of your life. Yeah. But now, how did you end up here? I've always been a numbers person. So I've always been inquisitive when people used to say 40% or 50% of people did one, two, and three. And I then found out that it's uh, mainly the market research uh, side of things where you'll, you'll then get to understand statistics. And I started working as a field worker and I ended up being a market researcher. Wow, but what about farming really ignited that passion and that curiosity? It's the passion, uh, Lindy. I grew up in, in, in Brits, uh, you know, in Bapong in Brits. And I've always been surrounded by farms around. And I've always been inquisitive to try and find out exactly what goes around be, um, uh, these farms and behind these farms. And I've always wanted, big, uh, back of my mind, I've always wanted to be a farmer. Yes, and you wanted to be a pig farmer to start off with. That's <laughs> correct. there's no pigs here. That's correct. Um, so in 2013, uh, I left the corporate world, packed my bags and headed down to Peter Marie's back to can study piggery management. And that's all I wanted, I've always wanted to do, was to do piggery. Um, but because of the high cost of feed, uh, I, I couldn't even continue with my piggery. I planted some vegetables to uh, sustain the piggery, you know, just to have a little bit of cash flow to buy feed. And uh, I fell in love with uh, fresh produce uh, production. Mm. And you had a mentor who played such a big role in your life. And that is Vincent Sequera from Rugani and Greenway Farms. That's correct. And it's one of the biggest in the agricultural space, That's right? That's correct. The number one carrots producers. There we go. Yeah. Now tell me about the relationship you had with them. Look, I, I started off uh, badly on when I moved into Talte and I didn't understand anything about soil preparation. And Vincent uh, uh, just one day he drove past the farm, he, uh, invited me over to his office and then um, he wanted to know what are my plans and then we sat down, it was 2018 uh, December and he told me before the 25th of December he needs to have my planting program on his desk and that's where the relationship started. Since then, Vincent Sequera has been a valuable mentor and ally to Eric, sharing knowledge and resources, but he wasn't Eric's first mentor, that was Eric's father. Recently you sadly lost your father who played such a big role on your farming journey. Yeah. Tell us about that. I told my old man, I said, I'm leaving this corporate world. I'm going into uh, farming. He does a lot of mingos back home and narkis and some vegetables. And I said, I'm joining you into this vegetable journey. He encouraged me and said, you need to go uh, and follow your dreams. That's exactly what I did. So he's played a, a very important role in my farming journey. Even when I wanted to give up, He's the one person who used to say, you don't give up. We don't give up. You need to stand up and start again. So all I need to do is be really resilient, 
and get this O'Neill Farms brand out there into the public and, and, and uh, into the international market and make him proud. And other people who are making you proud are your children. Oh, they yay. seem to be running this place, in yay. fact. <laughs> I've got a 15-year-old, uh, Oratile. I've got an 11-year-old, Unale Rona. They're both playing a very important role on my on, around this farm. And I must just say, I didn't force farming into them. They fell in love with farming. Let's go meet the little ones who are running this place. Shall we go? Oh, yeah, sure, we can go. Let's do this. All right. Eric's children are homeschooled. Once they are done with schoolwork for the day, they can't wait to get out into the fields, learning more valuable lessons along the way. I has taught me that we should never give up. And us starting with something, we, should, we, should, we shouldn't stop with what we started. We've had challenges with the implements breaking in the fields and us having to ask from other farmers assistance to take them out of the fields and also with uh, the diseases on the plants and all of that. I assist um, one of the tractor drivers in any way possible with the soil prep, uh, also in the inside with the green peppers and all of that, getting the fields ready. I wanna make the whole farm automated, making it easier for us in any way, and also making the tractors have computers and all of that. I love farming because I get to pick my family and I love doing it because I'm going to learn how to farm in a crop. So I was very close to Granddaddy because he taught us that we must never give up on our challenges. And I also, I'm also going to miss that we used to pick mangoes, avocados, oranges and our cheese together. And he was very passionate in farming. Next, we'll dig a little deeper into Eric's practices to find out how he turned this farm from lukewarm to hot stuff. Welcome back to African Farming. In a short space of time, pepper farmer Eric Mawane has turned Oneo Farms from a startup to a commercial enterprise. And earlier, he also shared with us the setbacks that he faced along the way. But he's showing that with the can-do attitude, passion and resilience, you can go a long way. How do you find the right market for your produce, Eric? I think, uh, Lindy, it always starts with uh, producing the right quality. So once people know that you're producing the right quality, the market will always uh, haunt you. Then that's exactly what happened with me. You know, I started planting the right varieties and then I produced the best quality peppers and then everyone wanted to have a take on those peppers. They saw my produce on the floors at the fresh produce market. Uh, on your boxes, there's always uh, contact numbers and they contacted me. Uh, and that's how a lot of the local market found out a lot about me. Uh, in terms of the international market, uh, somebody wrote an article about me and I started getting appetite from the international market for exports. What are the requirements when exporting outside of the continent? I must just say a key uh, requirement is you need to be Global GAP certified, which is the Global GAP, GAP meaning the good, good agricultural practice. And once you've got that, then there's other processes where you need to pro uh, register your produce uh, on a Department of Agriculture and Forestry database. And then they will then come back to you and tell you what are some of the uh, products that are allowed or not allowed for you to use on your crops uh, for international markets. All right, so now that I've learned about the marketing side of things, I want to now see the technical side of things. Eric, the cold weather has destroyed all your crops and now you're in the process of rebuilding. Now, let's talk about the step here of fixing things. Yeah. So unfortunately, yes, we've lost uh, uh, most of our crops and uh, you have to rebuild the, the, the farm again. So one of the things that we, one of the key things that we do is um, to fix the soil. And the best way to fix the soil is to plant the green beans. Green beans happens to be uh, Oneo Farms rotating crops. So once we take out all our peppers, the next crop we always have to plant is the green beans. Because of the nitrogen level, they will always fix your soil. So that's currently what we're currently doing now, to plant the green beans to fix the soil, but over and above that is also as part of our rotating crop. Okay, right. 
no i want you to show me how you're going to plant one of the uh, the key things that we do is we're using drip irrigation it's a 30 centimeter drip irrigation and how you pick up that it's a drip it's a 30 centimeter it's already so you already see that there's holes already yes so what you need to do you need to be very careful if if you put your green bean seed too deep it won't germinate so what we normally do is you look at the size of your finger, uh, your beans needs to go as deep as this. So what you do is, so I would go in, open the hole Let's with see. my finger. All right. Yes. Like that. And then put the, that's correct. Oh, okay. That's what we do. We so go. you just open and then and you put, just throw it in there. Yes. And then you just close off. All right. So maybe, maybe you can try. Let me do it. Yes. All right. I'm just going to throw it in there. And that's right. And then this is yours, right? Yeah. There we go. And Perfect. Then... And then you need to always make sure that you close off. Oh, but don't this do is it. it. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. So in a greenhouse, the green beans normally germinate after four to five days. Mm. Yes. On open field, it will take about seven to ten days for them to germinate. In the greenhouse, we have it after four weeks. So whatever we've planted now, in four weeks' time, they will probably be on about 1.2 to 1.5 meters after high. Four weeks. Yes, after four weeks, and then we start our harvesting. Wow. Okay. Then tell me what the next step is when it comes to the irrigation and watering. So we are done. So, so now we head into towards summer. It gets to be too hot, so we we always irrigate twice a day. In the morning, we give them a liter in the morning. Normally at the beginning of the irrigation, we'd normally put in a cup, a measuring cup under one of the holes. Mm. And then we monitor how long does it take for that, for, 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 for this uh, system to give us one liter. And that's how we normally monitor it. You use an interesting technique for your crops called trellising. That's right. What's the function of that? So, so, we plant, so there's two different types of beans. You either get what we call the bush beans or the runner beans. The runner beans are the ones that would normally go as high as about two to three meters high. Mm. But when they grow and they go up, we need to support them. So we normally have got what we, tra we call the trellising rope. So we would normally put them in, into the ground. So once you put them in, as the beans grow, they hold on to that trellising rope. Uh, one, supporting them so that they don't fall. And also, they will also give us more, more fruits. Um, if you've got... The higher you go, the more correct. fruits you, that's you correct. have. That's correct. That's correct. Now we're seeing you rebuilding. Of course, you can't do that alone. That's correct. That's where partnerships also come in, right? That's correct. We've got um, Cotiva as our uh, uh, key uh, partners. You know, they're helping us quite a lot when it comes to the herbicides, the fertilizer programs, and a and, and couple of things around the farm. But we also have got the health and department of agriculture that are our main uh, 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 partners on the farm. I mean, they, 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 they've, they've given us a refrigerated truck, we've got a tractor, and they're also building a pack house also for us. But we also do have Standard Bank as on the financial side, as our financial um, uh, advisors. We've partnered with uh, Upgrid, and we've also partnered with John Deere. Nice. Eric is not only rebuilding to get back to full veggie production so that he can deliver on numerous off-take agreements and export his crops, but also so that he can get back to producing homemade chili sauces. We ran a trial in 2018. Um, we did our own sauces. Now we're going to go big on the sauces. So we're planting a lot of the jalapeno. And uh, with those jalapenos, we soak them um, uh, for about six months. Then after six months, then we cook them and make sauces in our kitchen. And the longer you soak, I can imagine the hotter yes, you come, right? So, so we always have to, so there's a recipe of what you need to soak your jalapeno or whatever you will be making sauces with for about six months. And the longer you keep them, the hotter they become. I don't think I can survive that. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> this is not going to plant itself. Let's continue. Thank you. I'm going to take some of that. Yes. It's incredible how positive and joyful Eric Maiwani is in the face of all the tough setbacks he is having to overcome. It's proof that there is always something to celebrate in life and in farming. What's your ultimate goal for Oneo Farms? I think uh, there's three main goals. For me is I'd like to have to see Oneo Farms being the biggest pepper and chili producers in the world. Secondly, I'd like to see my brand all over the world. But thirdly, is to leave the legacy for, for the kids. I would like uh, generation after generation after me to still continue and uh, keep the brand of when our farms running. To growth and legacy. Cheers yes. to you guys. <laughs> Cheers to you guys too. Eric 
Mawane took a leap of faith into farming and that one leap of faith has secured a generation of farmers who will be making Oneo farms synonymous with chilies and peppers. If you have similar aspirations at home, not to worry, our experts in studio have your back. So stay with us as we turn the heat up. Welcome back, Nzanzi, to African Farming. Farmer Eric Mawane calls challenges thorns. He has certainly faced his fair share of thorny patches, especially recently with the passing of his father. But where there are thorns, you're sure to find roses, and Eric's can-do and never-give-up attitude will no doubt ensure him and his children a rosy farming future. Welcome, experts. I'll start with Sylvester Lubambo from Le Mans. How are you, Sylvester? Good to see you. I'm well, and I'm glad to be back here again. Lerato Mashilwane from John Deere. Good to see you again, lady. Good to be back, Lindy. Looking very gorgeous today. Why, thank you so much. <laughs> Freddie Ndindana from Koteva. Welcome, Freddie. Thanks, Lindy. I'm glad to be here. And Madume Ramachopa from Enza Zaden. Thanks, Lindy. Great to be here. Now, Freddie, you've had a long journey with Eric. What are some of his challenges that you've seen along the way? In summer, Eric faces uh, pressure of weeds as well as uh, certain insects that affect his crops. And when I talk of weeds, he has got more of broadleaf weeds as well as grasses. So for him, you know, to have good control of those weeds, he's supposed or he was supposed to know good herbicides for use, either pre-emergent herbicide or post-emergent herbicide. So we worked on that by creating a very good spray program, which is helping him now, you know, to get, uh, you know, the crop with a good quality as well as yield. When it comes to insects, we also, you know, worked on a spray program, especially for the control of sap feeding insects in his, in his papers. A product that uh, has got a broad spectrum, a product that controls white flies as an example, but also controlling aphids. So by doing that, it's helping as well. But also, it's, it was important, and it's still important for Eric to exercise scouting which is essentially monitoring for the presence of pests and diseases. So this is helping in a lot of ways. And also he's doing it by teaching his, uh, uh, some of the, 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 call, the labors or the employees that he work with. But now what about weather? How do farmers prepare for really bad weather? It can be cold weather, extreme cold weather, or extreme hot conditions. Yes, Lindy, crops grow differently depending on weather conditions. So an understanding of the right crop to, to grow in summer, winter, spring, or autumn is very important. And it comes also with the assistance from agronomists. So it's important to bear that in mind. Now, Madume, Freddy raises an important point about the types of crops that you can pick depending on weather conditions and climate, etc. Now, maybe you can expand more on that. Yeah, so firstly, we need to look at the kind of growing conditions. So whether open field or under, under protection, what we'd call greenhouse, uh, greenhouse crops. And then next to that, we need to look at the kind of varieties that you are growing under those conditions. So you need to select the kind of variety which is suitable under the uh, production conditions, but also factor your immediate surroundings, the growing conditions, under what type of growing conditions are, are you growing, whether greenhouse or open field, and the type of structures that you have. And based on that, then you can match the necessary kind of variety suitable for those, uh, for those uh, conditions. And then with that, uh, Freddie was talking, for example, around the issues of uh, disease infestation, in this case, viruses. So already in your variety selection processes, look for varieties that will already give you the upper hand. So with the necessary disease resistances, because already you've got genetics or variety backing you up, which already makes the process a lot easier. And you're starting on a positive, on a top positive note in that regard. Mm, and timing is also just as important, right? Certainly. Start with the end in mind, because ultimately you need to ask yourself, when do I want to be into market? So once you've def defined when you want to be into, into market, then at least you can work it a step backwards as to how long is the variety going to take until it comes into production. And then next to that, then you can liaise with your uh, local nursery in terms of how long the seedlings are going to take to be ready. 
That way you're able to maximize on your entire production cycle. So in the case of a, of a summer crop, so that you come early enough in the season so that you can still have a full um, a production season in that regard. Now, Sylvester, even though Eric has faced challenge after challenge, we know that he is self-sufficient. But on a practical level, how can agribusiness add value to a farmer like Eric? Eric has done well, has done very well until, until, until now. And I think it is time to bring in a strategic agribusiness partner um, that will assist him to also bring in tools and as well as um, management of how to manage in, 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 a, in, a, in a difficult time. We know that he's been through a lot of challenges over, 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 over the years. And one important thing when you bring in a partner like an agribusiness is that you, you, you bring in a company that will be able to sit down with, with an Eric and say, let us do an overall risk assessment of, of, of the business and offer solutions such, such as a insurance products that will cover hail damage, that will cover the frost damage, fire, as, as well as theft. You see, so that will that, that will assist when it comes to the sustainability of the business and taking the business into the next level. All right. Now, Eric is training his children to one day take over the farm. Now, what are your thoughts on succession planning? Yeah, again, it talks to sustainability of the business. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to see the children disinvolved in the business. Um, success, succession planning talks to the future leadership of, of, of the business. For instance, if there's a sudden need, to, to, to change leadership, then you know that that's planned and that's in line. It's, it's, it's critical, especially for a medium-sized business like Eric's. Mm. Now, Lerato, with the challenges that Eric has faced, in order for him to cope, he needs to start pushing volumes. Now, how does mechanization play a role? So, Lindy, Eric has an open field to work with at the moment, right? Uh, so, farmers' windows, they're so tight and timing is incredibly important. So, if as a farmer you do not have strong enough equipment, um, it slows down the production and ultimately affects the entire process, you know, from land prep, uh, planting, harvesting, and ultimately um, the delivery to the end user. So, as a farmer's needs change over time, I think it's very important that the mechanization needs are also revised. And that will, I think in this case, assist Eric greatly. But now for a farmer such as Eric, who's gone through all these challenges, he may not necessarily have enough capital to buy a big tractor. Then what happens in that situation? Lindy, you know, we're not just interested in the sale, you know, uh, we're also interested in building a long time partnership uh, with farmers. So uh, in any way we can, we will step in and assist um, in the interim up until such a time he's at a point where he's able to acquire you know, um, his, his, his big tractor. We won't just, you know, sideline him. All right, before we wrap this up, let's get some closing remarks. Please, let's start with you, Matume. I think work out a clear planning and a planting program. Freddy? Stay hungry for learning to advance your farm. Loretto, what do you have for us? Um, invest in new technology, yield better results. Sylvester, what's your advice? Good financial planning and tight budget control is essential. Nice. Thank you, experts. As always, it's been such a pleasure to speak to each and every one of you. And to you, Farmer Eric Mawani, thank you for always seeing the light in the darkness. You give us hope to do the same. We wish you every farming success, and we can't wait to see O'Neill Farms lush and green again. And to you at home, don't forget that you can engage with us on our social media platforms by using the hashtag African Farming. You can also visit our website, africanfarming.com. I'm Zanzi. Do remember, we farm better together. <laughs>